time now for our regular Wednesday book review slot. Bloomer is set in a retirement home early in the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. And if you think that this sounds like a damper, well, it isn't. The book is about four close friends who reminisce about old loves, romance and local and global issues. It's full of gentle humor and fun. We join now by author Anne Slebush. Thank you so much, Anne, and good morning to you. In writing the book, one could almost sense that this is an antidote to the voice of ageism that says at a particular age, mm. people of your age are not supposed to have fun. You're not supposed to be climbing mountains. You're not supposed to just let your, uh, forget your bra at home. So give us the inspiration behind the book. <laughs> yes. Um, at the time, as you said, that really sad, complicated time for all of us, the old people were suddenly on the world stage in a way they'd never been before in my lifetime. And, um, you know, first it was some kind of relief when you realized that the people who were dying in droves were old and people kind of said, oh, well, you know, that's natural, old people die, you know, sure, not me. Um, then it moved to the point where actually in a kind of a weird desire to protect old people, they virtually cut them off from, from living. Uh, old age homes sh shut down their doors, you know, and, and it was keep the body alive at all costs, but without particular reference to the soul and the mind. I know that the whole of humankind was doing that, but somehow more particularly for elderly people who were kind of, yeah, everybody felt better if they were nowhere to be seen. Yeah, but I mean, as you're saying, I mean, COVID-19, uh, when we reflect on many people um, would have lost loved ones or colleagues uh, during mm. that mm. Uh, severe stage of the, the pandemic, that mm. it had become an mm. equalizer because initially it was about mm. old people and before you knew it, it was people that had comorbidities or even younger people. Mm. Uh, but having said that, mm. and I think for me, it's also about defying ageism in the sense that society would prescribe that there is a cut off for you to have lived your life and now you must be sort of almost uh, uh, banished to the sea as it were. Mm. Um, you know, it mm. is a fictional book, but it is also mm. one that uh, can, can relate to uh, in terms of the friends and mm. the avatar that you guys had trying to go on this excursion. What were you trying to communicate about the book? Yeah, exactly what I mean, you, you've hit it spot on, you know, we, we old people are stereotyped in a in an awful manner, you know, they they people are they are mocked. Um, I find if I'm just shopping in, in the local supermarket, if I talk in a, in a sort of an intelligent way, the shop assistant stares at me, sort of what, <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to have a brain, um, you know, and so, yeah, so we stereotypically grumpy, we stereotypically incompetent with technology. Um, and so although it's set in COVID, this was really a book for all times and for all people. I, I believe it's for, for all ages because it's about relationships. There are three generations involved in the story. Um, the protagonist happens to be an artist called Maggie who's on a kind of a mission in, in her own head. You know, she's, she's, she's not reaching to the world as she goes through. She's really talking to herself. And the thoughts that she's sharing, I think, are the thoughts that all older people it's a journey that people go through. You know, there's some people who kind of say, oh, well, look, this is a book for old people. I only read it when I'm old. And, and I, I think that's a terrible mistake. You know, unless you're planning to actually die young, you know, you are definitely going to get old. And so think about it, you know, and uh, reinvest some dynamism in your relationship with your old people, your mums and dads and aunts and uncles and just the old person at the shop and so on. Stop you know, being patronizing. Uh, yeah, what, what, yeah, what I love for me, um, and is the fact that, uh, as, as my mentor would, would always say, that dreams do not expire. For as long as you breathe, mm. uh, whatever it is that mm. you've put on the back burner because of some circumstances, raising children, uh, or you couldn't afford, you know, to study a particular degree, you yourself have a master's in philosophy, which is, is the equivalent of a PhD, uh, having been a teacher and worked in the education department, Western Cape, a written children's book, long listed one, I think, uh, is the Corona uh, book. But nonetheless, you then discovered your artist self or reignited that passion in your life. So it is about second chances and giving yourself the mm. opportunity to pursue that absolutely. which gives you joy. Absolutely, absolutely. And to to um, yeah, just grab it 
and, and, and not to consider, I think a lot of older people start to worry that they're going to be a financial drain on their children. They start to pack themselves off into old age homes maybe too early. I'm not opposed to old age homes. You know, there's a place for absolutely everything and they're not even called old age homes in particular, but I'm just using it as a, as a symbol. Um, but but don't be fearful. You know, don't. You might have another thirty years to go after you've retired. You, on, on the other hand, you might have another two. You know, so whatever it is, use those years with gusto. I think that's really where the title came in. It's Bloomer. Um, the characters were they knew they were boomers, um, but now they wanted to kind of expand the concept to blooming. And you don't have to wait until you're a late bloomer. You can flip and will bloom. Bloom young. <laughs> mm. and, and, and bloom young. I often refer to myself as a late bloomer, perpetually or eternally youthful. And I think you've got that spirit as well. I mean, I love what you say in the book that um, do your dreams. Time is short. What's on your bucket list? Do it. It is that Nike saying, you know, just do it. Is that the, the message overall, arch, overarching message that you'd like to share uh, with the readers? Definitely. Definitely. And I think it's also absolutely that one. And then it's find your voice, whatever it is, and use it. You know, uh, I mean, it's true. Old people are notorious for being grumpy, you know, but then find out something value adding to be grumpy about, you know, find a mission, uh, express yourself. Don't be afraid to use your voice. Use your voice. Bloom. Yes, oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. And before you go, the definition mm -hmm. of bloomer, you just to Google <laughs> the, the word, it's not necessarily just a particular generation uh, or, of, of uh, people. Uh, it also refers to loosely worn undergarment, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Truth to tell, people of my age, when we were at school, we, we literally had to wear something. They called it bloomers. It was school panties. It was like, a, let's call it not a modern day, but a 1950s, 60s version of the original bloomer, which was really quite a, a, um, a breakthrough for women, where they started to say, look, you can wear a split garment, split dress, so you can ride a bike, ride a horse, etc." And it was named after somebody whose name just happened to her surname was Bloomer. And that's, that's where it came about. But we use it, we convert it to use it with flowers and yeah. other things that bloom as well. Absolutely. Love it. Uh, really, really appreciate your time. That's Anne Shelley Bush, author of Bloomer, which is available at all good bookstores. And you're welcome to also uh, book online with Halco uh, Publicist. And you can get yourself a copy. Really loved it. Yeah, so really. now you know. You're educated. Don't you, I was waiting for you to call me a late bloomer.